This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Chat, where we talk with awesome people in and around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in technology and entertainment and po- other podcasts, and we have a lot of fun here. We're in the Sorgatron Media Studio here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and uh, we got a great crew with us today to chat with us. Um, but in the meantime, please check out everything at awesomecast.com, including the past Awesome Chat interviews, all the way back to the day of our first interview of uh, Yad Jagoff uh, and his podcast and website, and uh, a whole bunch of people in there and of course uh, you can check out the awesome cast where we talk about the uh, awesome things of the week and we do record that live on facebook um every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern time hit us up awesome cast at sorgatronmedia.com and awesome cast on the twitter let us know uh anybody that you think we should be chatting with on the show uh so with me as, as you may know uh i do kind of uh sneak into the open Coffee clubs at Alpha Lab. They're still letting me go to those. And and I like to see what's coming next. Who's uh, who's building up? And uh, we've had there's been an interesting track record out of there um, that we've we've had on the show. Uh, and uh, this this week I wanted to get some people in here that are doing some some fun things in childcare and with the Amazon Echo as well. Uh, we have with us on the couch in the studio. Uh, we have uh, Shamira Williams. Hello. Hello. And uh, co-founder as well, uh, Greg Quinlan, joining us. Hello. 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 So, CZ Busy, again, you're, you're integrating the uh, Amazon Echo in kind of an interesting way here. Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing? So, we are using the Amazon Echo and Google Assistant to help child care providers log their daily interactions with children so that parents can view them in real time and providers can use the reporting for when compliance officers come to visit. Awesome. So so what is this? So it's giving you kind of a hands-free option for this, right? Correct. So in, in child care, you're required to log things like diapering, napping, mm-hmm. feedings, arrival and departure. And we thought that the voice option was the best way to go because you were with little people and now you don't have to look for a pen or a piece of paper or a dry erase marker in order to log those items. You can simply talk to them throughout the day and it'll log it. And at the end of the day, you can review your reporting and parents can also see it in real time, which, you know, that anxious new mom or parent who just doesn't you know, wants to know like how Sally going throughout the day, she was a little sick, can actually just log on and see how their child is performing throughout the day. That's awesome. So how did you guys um, come to come to using uh, uh, that device, this device for this reason? Like where, where, what's kind of the origins of this, uh, this company here? <laughs> so uh, uh, our story at CC Busy goes back to Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and I was at my brother-in-law's house and he had a, uh, a, a voice assistant in his house. And up to that point, I had been kind of skeptical about them. And so I have a daughter and she's 10 and uh, she got to be DJ with the voice assistant all day long. <laughs> and we just happened to be headed to sh- Chicago. My uh, wife works in early childhood education as well. And we, she had a national funders meeting in Chicago and uh, it just happened that there's an American girl doll store in Chicago, which is right next to the Lego store. So both my kids were happy. And in between, there was uh, an Amazon pop-up store. And actually, it was a podcast where I learned that it was pretty easy to program voice assistants. That, uh, and I was like, oh, 35 bucks for one of those devices and a smart plug? Let, let's pick that up. So I started experimenting with uh, uh, programming that. I made it a, a sort of a cold coach that would... Uh, use the like what 13 steps uh the cdc centers for disease control uh says that it takes to for to diaper a child Mm -hmm. and uh the skill i made would walk you through how to do that and i shared on social media that i had made that and shamira saw we're friends on facebook and she said hey that's interesting that might be a business so uh, we sat down a couple times and that led to us applying to alpha lab and uh, getting in getting that initial investment and working Mm -hmm. on building 
building the skill for CC Busy. And it sounds like this interface is a good bit. You know, it's not just a skill that responds to you. Like when, you know, I, I play with one that, that makes a dog bark to make it sound like there's somebody here. <laughs> you know, there's just an interface and that's it, right? You guys are actually like using it to sort of record the data, like it's incoming and, and recording someplace, right? That's right. So that's the provider would invoke the skill and, and CC Busy asks for what, what activity they want to log. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as they say, diapering or arrival or what have you. Mm -hmm. In some cases, you know, they need, it will ask for what child they're, you're interacting with. And then uh, CC Busy goes and logs that interaction on our servers. Mm -hmm. And that makes it available for, you know, regulators when they, uh, when they need it or parents when they want to see that. It's good. So uh, let, let's walk back for a moment because we're talking about regulators and things like that. Um, for you know somebody that maybe isn't in this field or needs a, a service like this, can you tell me about like what you know what kind of child services is this aimed at? You know that would need something like this. So we are initially looking at family child care providers that mm -hmm. are licensed by the Office of Child Development and Early Learning in Pennsylvania. Um, we can also and look forward in our future to expanding to center-based child care facilities. But right now we wanted to start with the family providers because it's just one person typically working in there. Yeah. They, they're the decision maker. They're small business owners. They're community ingrained businesses, right? They may have been doing that work for the last 25 to 30 years, seeing multiple generations. And so we felt like they were the best people to start with. They were also probably going to give us the most honest feedback. Right. They're there at arrival and departure because it's their home and they've opened it up to families to be able to um, take their kids to provide care for. But they are we are focused on licensed child care providers so that they do have a licensing agent coming in annually to review their work and make sure that they're in compliance with the state and federal law. Excellent. Tell me a little bit about the challenges in developing this. Um, obviously you're dealing with a lot of regulations, right? And you're making sure you're lining up with that. Um, but what are, what are the kind of the, were, was there any surprises in meeting with lining up with that and the technical challenges as you were building this? Uh, so I see that this is the, where do I begin? Uh, look, I so, think, uh, so I think one of the more interesting challenges. So, uh, as we have been working on getting ready to be in our first beta test facility, we got the enrollment list. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were some names in, in that uh, in that classroom that we knew that uh, uh, Alexa wasn't going to understand mm -hmm. and that we needed to uh, make our, uh, our uh, functions a little more robust so that they could handle non-traditional names. Okay. Uh, do you want to, I don't, I, I'm concerned about, I don't want to, uh, uh, break privacy with our first facility, right? <laughs> right. Like so, uh, but um, uh, one one name that we've seen Even in several places, name. like so, Shamira's name, mm -hmm. uh, uh, S H I M I R A, uh, Alexa doesn't handle well initially. So mm -hmm. uh, by adding a field that so uh, uh, what is it? What is it? I'm trying to remember what what Alexa hears when we say Shamira. Not remembering. Shum. Oh, see now uh, Alexa is across the room <laughs> talking to us. Um, so when when the device hears your name, it does it hears something else. Yes, it so hears is it, sh like Shimana. Shania. I don't know. Yeah, yes, it's like soft. as in twain, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we added a field where we could just enter the name that Alexa hears, and in some cases, um, Alexa doesn't hear uh, won't handle the name spelling right mm -hmm. and there's a um uh there's a there's a markup language that uh amazon has developed so you can uh put in um phonetic spellings so we added uh, a field for what the, the device will hear and then it added a field that's phonetic and we've been able to to address that and so we're we're, we're hoping that uh we'll be able to uh, use CC Busy in our beta environment throughout the month of September to catch a, a, a full month's mm -hmm. uh, a full month's data. What we haven't really talked about is that um, the Office of Child Development and Early Learning has started a program where they're working with third party developers to submit the attendance data uh, and upload that with XML formats and um, be able to do the invoicing for these centers as well. As well, nice. so where they might be, you know doing a handwritten form 
they'll just be able to use CC Busy's data to hit a button, you know, sort of look over the summary data for the month and then hit a button and upload it. Where right now we know some providers will take the printed form and drive it mm -hmm. into the office. Uh, so we're hoping it will be a big time saver for providers. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, so is this, you know, again, this is, are, are you, you're, you're kind of applying a new technology to maybe people that aren't technologically, you know, they're, they're, you know, childcare providers. Maybe they're not, you know, people that are really diving into voice assistants on their phones if they even have one on their phone, right? Are you having a little bit, you know, what is that kind of reaction where you say, hey, we're going to make you talk to this little tuna can over here <laughs> you know and, right. and, and this, this is how you're gonna hockey puck yeah, yeah yeah this is how you're gonna log your your stuff like it, how has that kind of reaction been so far in your in your tests up to now so so far even talking about it mm -hmm. some people have a little of skepticism right about right. privacy or like should i have this how do i use it when should i use it um and so we're, we've been working through that. Uh, we've offered professional development in order to talk to providers about how to use it beyond just the functionality that we are creating, right? So how do you use it for audio books? How do you use it to um, help you through transitional periods of the day, which, you know, sometimes there's five kids and you're trying to get them all to the bathroom and go one by one. But how could you use your um, Alexa to help provide some engagement or activities or do yoga or mm -hmm. brush your teeth, right? Yeah. Um, and listening and recording your own stuff. So those are the things that we're talking about with providers. And we have really been intentional about pr creating professional development for them so that they can ask us those questions and we can address the privacy concerns and other ways that they can use it. So what we hear from uh, people who use voice assistants is they're delightful, right? You know, being able to, to interact with the device and, you know, whether it's to bring up music or, you know, play games with skills, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. So uh, I think we recognize early on that these aren't... Uh, these environments aren't filled with early adopters. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there'll there'll be some skepticism. And we started with how do we uh, convince providers that we understand their best interests, and that uh, this is a tool that is uh, valuable beyond CC Busy, right? That it it there's administrative value to it, but there's a lot of educational value as well. So you know, like Shamira says, we've developed professional development. Uh, which is, you know, they're required to have so many hours uh, of professional of training every year. You know, much like uh, lawyers and accountants, childcare <laughs> prof professionals need that too. Um, so we've uh, built that training to help them meet that requirement and show them what's possible with uh, with a voice assistant. That's cool. That's cool. Um, and and uh, and also like. Echoes have been around for a little bit. This isn't a brand new technology. No. I mean, everybody now sees the commercials where it says good night, good night, a word and everything like that. Right. And yeah. it responds. And right. so uh, there's probably like a little bit of a, at least a familiarity going into this. Right? Uh, right. That has to help you guys. Yeah. So, you know, um, because I have them and my parents just, my nephew wanted to play with one. I took one over and my dad calls it the girl. Like, he is the constant. <laughs> like, he could have been the Saturday Night Live skit yeah. completely. Yeah. He's like, what's the girl you brought over here? And I'm like, what girl? <laughs> I haven't brought a friend over here. You know the one you plugged in? And I'm like, oh, oh, the A word. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, there, yes. was a, there was a Saturday Night Live sketch, uh, a <laughs> fake ad for, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was uh, Alexa Silver. Yes. Uh, so it was filled with... Uh, O older people and how you know how they interacted with the device mm -hmm. it, and it was it's very funny uh my mom every time it's brought up my mom brings up that i need one of those the one from saturday night live and just like <laughs> yeah i got you and also like like her she she changed siri to the the guy voice and yeah. was like oh that's my that's my guy you know okay. just like okay that's, that's like the way she says it it's kind of creepy <laughs> So that was the first thing we looked at um, because it's an early child care environment yeah, was yeah. could you name it something else so mm -hmm. that we didn't create branded kids, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, so, you know, 
those are their first words. They're just learning language right there. And we just or or have you had a where there was a kid with the name? Yes, yes, we have. We even as we've been in Alpha Lab, talked to people about this, and the one person was like, "Yeah, my kid is just going around behind us talking to it," and we're like, "Oh." Yeah, and I was like, that's just modeling. So, like, we thought about all of those things mm -hmm. when we were developing it, too. So that's why the professional development was really crucial to us to be like, hey, let's think about all the things that you're going to think about by bringing this into your environment. Absolutely. But it's also a great way to reinforce modeling and the importance of reading and language development to your children and in your households. We heard a story about a, uh, a family with a child with developmental delays, <laughs> and the child was motivated to... Uh, to focus their speech so that they can control the device. Hmm. We, we also heard an anecdote from a provider who came to one of our trainings about where the family was a Russian immigrant family and the parents used Russian at home. And in that case, she uh, used uh, the uh, Google Home Mini as the device mm -hmm. and used the translate function to uh, have the device speak some Russian words. Oh, so that is cool. People are getting really creative about how they're using voice assistance in, in uh, early learning environments. That's great. I mostly just play my music on my Google <laughs> Home at this point. It's a really good speaker, too. It is. Uh, it is. <laughs> it is. That's great. Uh, so, uh, you know, going from that, uh, you know, again, people are used to these. And we were talking a little bit beforehand about, you know, there, of course, there's also stories about privacy concerns, too. And, of course, if you're, you're dealing with care providers and everything you just mentioned about want to make sure you honor people's privacy and even discussion discussing, right. discussing this yeah uh, talk about a little bit of um you know what measures you're taking to make sure privacy is kind of uh, uh taken care of in your mm -hmm. in your platform so one thing we really wanted to talk to providers about is privacy right mm -hmm. and what does that mean and how you should think about talking to the device when you are talking about a child, even when you're doing an anecdotal note, right? Some things you need to be waiting for after class. I mean, after you've closed because you just don't want to say those things in public for everyone to know about. Right. Um, but we've also looked at the position statement, which is by Fred, the Fred Rogers Center and the National Association of the Education of Young Children to see what they say about privacy and how we should go about that and recording and storing data. And we also like to remind people, you can always turn things off, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, it's just one of those things of you can turn it off. Um, and I'll let Greg talk about our login security and things like that it's on our back end. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, we're using uh, login with Amazon. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll use Google's proprietary login system. Uh, and then, you know, we're uh, serving it off of uh uh, Amazon Web Services and using the uh, PostgreSQL uh, database to manage everything. So you know we're we're using there's a there's a lot of smart people who are building tools to keep data safe and you know we're building our platform leveraging leveraging that knowledge and uh, technologies. That's awesome. That's awesome. So so what's next for this? What are your next steps? Uh, you know how how are you guys aiming to grow here? And uh, and I know, and I know Demo Day is coming up in a couple months here too. Demo day. That's uh, right. So, you know, uh, September is going to be a big month for us to, mm -hmm. you know, actually have the device in a facility. Uh, uh, when we collect a month's worth of data, then we can help the provider uh, to take advantage of that third party upload and be able to do billing for them uh, so that we can sort of do a, a full month and show that it works and mm -hmm. start to document how much time the provider is saving. Because that's really the, the case that we're making is that this technology can really save time and money, as well as you know, uh, better help the provider better communicate to parents. So, um, and then you know, so Alpha Lab, the program of Alpha Lab is done. We're getting to demo day. Uh, we're a finalist in the Upprise, and they've been so terrific and supportive in helping us develop our business. Um, we got to figure out how we uh, get enough resources to sustain us until we get you know, sales, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're partnering with uh, Trying Together works with the Homewood Child Care Association to, uh, to uh, build those businesses. And uh, we've been in uh, talks with them about uh, having an initial contract uh, to get them. Uh, we think we can help them use technology beyond CC Busy to uh, improve their quality and potentially get uh, higher reimbursements for the state. Mm -hmm. So... Um, 
So we're, this is mostly a B2B kind of model, it sounds like? Uh, yes, although uh, family child care providers are sort of like consumers more than, yeah. you know, because yeah. they're they're a single, they're typically a single operator. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, I, you know, Shamira talked about why we started with family child care as opposed to talking to centers and knowing that we knew who that decision maker was mm -hmm. and knew that was a, a, that kind of pitch was a simpler pitch than trying to say, uh, deal with a nonprofit center or in the case of like, Pennsylvania is the headquarters for Brightside Academy, which is in five different states. That's a different kind of sale than, mm -hmm. you know, just marketing to a uh, an individual small business owner. Absolutely. Awesome. And in October, we will be doing a professional development for the early childhood um, educator summit in State College, Pennsylvania, which is a Pennsylvania annual conference for early child care providers. And so we will be doing our introduction to voice assistance there. So hopefully help a whole bunch of providers <laughs> think about how to use voice assistance. That's so great. we're gearing up to uh, have a lot of successful customers in southwestern Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, once we have uh, a strong base of success here, you know, uh, our solutions are really Pennsylvania based right now because we know Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania regulations. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, talks with Techstars NYC. Uh, there's a in New York City. There's like six thousand family-based childcare providers, so that would be a great market to to talk to. And look so into. this is this is like in most healthcare kind of things. Like this is going to be kind of a state by state because of the regulations as far as rollout. Right. Okay. That that that's how we've envisioned it. Mm -hmm. We we know that for family childcare, there's about one hundred twenty thousand providers nationally. Yeah, and uh, but we will sort of look to be successful in in a state and then sort of add states as we as we uh find growth and success that's awesome yeah that's really cool and uh, and this is going to be like for the this is mostly echo based like so uh the code base that i built for the original skill that i was playing around with mm -hmm. uh, in, in november and december last year was i, I started with the with with amazon mm -hmm. uh but uh it's our intent to have it work for both platforms nice uh and we'll see uh given how uh our uh, com competition in the uprise goes uh we may have some resources to uh, hire some help for me as the chief developer uh to be able to We'll see how that quickly that gets added to our schedule of That's things great. to do. That's yeah. great. You're, and, and just to be clear, your company is, is it mostly just you two at this point? It's us. Uh, is, it's li us this is the entire company sitting on the couch <laughs> right it. now. And that's the cool thing about the Alpha Lab thing is it's like usually one person, two people, three people. I think the most I've seen Alpha Lab is like four people in a cubicle. Uh, but, you know, but that that's it. And that's all it takes to, to build something like really cool like this. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, CC Busy and... Uh, uh, being a developer is was a career pivot for me. I actually came to Pittsburgh to be the managing director of City Theater. Mm -hmm. So I was in uh, nonprofit administration. I also uh, was the executive director of Focus on Renewal in McCree's Rocks for a while. Uh, my wife had the opportunity to have to work in Harrisburg, and that led me to think I want to step away from uh, struggling to get nonprofits to succeed and. Mm -hmm. uh, I had studied uh, physics and theater in college and had done some coding under the physics degree. And I was like, I think I want to get to a different kind of challenge. I want to uh, work on uh, technology challenges instead of uh, uh, fundraising and management challenges uh, that, that you find in the nonprofit sector. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, well, if people want to find out more information about you guys, where can they go? ccbusy.com. You can find us on Twitter at childcarebusy, Instagram at childcarebusy, Facebook childcarebusy. So childcarebusy is our handle on social and ccbusy.com is our website. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for you guys for uh, joining us here uh, for, for chatting about uh, what you guys are doing. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to see you guys grow. I'm hoping I hear your name in the news a bit more over the next year and everything. That's always how it seems to happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for this opportunity. Mike. This All is, right. Thanks. Great. Thanks a lot. Go check them out. And, and please uh, give a shout out. Uh, Innovation Works. I know we just talked about on the main show as of this recording, um, uh, celebrating 20 years. And they're the parent company of an Alpha Lab that's given opportunities to companies like this to, to grow. 
uh, and and the laundry list of, of companies that have come out there is amazing. Uh, no weight that we've had on the show, you know, closing for for huge amounts uh, in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, I was a resumator, I think, was a, a big one out of there that acquired a few years ago. Show clicks. Show clicks came out. Of, they were an Alpha Lab company. Yeah, they they went through. Uh, that, that that was before my. That's before that's, I was paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> I knew they were local, but uh, that good good big stuff that's growing and really kind of changed the landscape of technology and and the companies and entrepreneurship here in Pittsburgh. So thank you so much. Check out uh, and you can find a few of those other companies if you go back to awesomecast.com in our awesome chat series. And please stay tuned and again hit us up if there's anybody you think we should be chatting with here in the studio here in Beachview. And uh, until but thank you to our, my awesome guests. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.